Good evening and welcome in our Savior's name. I'm so glad that you joined us this evening to sing our praises to the Lord. For generations, the church has passed down songs. Songs that teach the faith. Songs that share the promises of God. Just like the prophets of old. As they proclaim the birth of a Savior, they pass down the faith from generation to generation telling them of the promises of our God and giving them the hope of a Savior. These ancient words have been passed down for a long time and we still proclaim them today. Ancient words.
The prophets of old proclaimed that Jesus would come, the Savior who would save his people from their sins. The final prophet did come. Mark points out that John the Baptist was the final and greatest of the prophets. As he spoke that the Savior would be here, he cried out on the banks of Jordan and announced his coming. As the prophets spoke these words of promise, it was not something to just be heard, but it was something to be acted upon. It was something demanding a response from God's people. And respond, they did. A heartfelt prayer saying, Come, Lord Jesus. Come, thou long expected Jesus. i 
and come he did. He came to seek and save the lost. Advent is a word that we describe this season. We await the advent of our Lord. Advent in Latin means the coming. And Jesus did come. The advent of our King happened on Christmas Day. And so we join in celebrating the advent of our King. That night when our Lord was born, a Noel rang out. Noel is actually a French term. It's a term uh, that they use for Christmas. It's a term that literally means good news. From the Latin uh, Natali, which means to be born. It makes sense that we sing of the first Noel For it is a joyous moment when the angels sang out proclaiming that Jesus was born. The good news for all of us to hear. The first Noel.
the first Noel, and yet it still has a singing today. One of my favorite hymns for Christmas, for Advent, for all times of the year is Joy to the World. Isaac Watts wrote the song in 1719, and actually, he did not intend it for Christmas. No, Isaac Watts, he looked at the, uh, the hymns and the psalms of his church, and he was sad. He was sad that they just didn't have enough joy. He saw that the songs, some felt like funeral dirges. Some didn't give enough credit to God. Some didn't proclaim of his greatness well enough for Isaac. And so he began to write hymns every day. He wrote a hymn, a new hymn each week for his congregation at the age of 18. And as that tradition continued for him, this gem came out of that process. And as he proclaimed what is said in Psalm 98, let us sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. We sing joy to the world, for he has reached into our deplorable sickness. He's reached into the curse that has stretched too far. And as far as the curse is found, he has tore it. Tore it up from the earth to make us new. Joy to the world.
started with our hymn sing, we're reminded that the Christmas story begins with an angel's message. The angel Gabriel not only came to Zechariah, but came to Mary with a message from God. And that, Mary, and that message would change Mary's life forever. But not just Mary's life, our life. When the angel Gabriel came down from heaven,
The prayer of the nation of Israel was long that the Savior of the nations would come. The Messiah. The one that was foretold. But the plea of the nations became far, far greater. As the Savior would, know, would not only save Israel, save God's people, but save the whole world from their sins. The plea of Israel became our plea. And the plea of all nations. Come. Come. And give us peace, hope, and rest. Savior of the nations, come. His heroic course began. It began on one holy night. The night that we remember for generations. The prayer of Israel indeed became our prayer. Listen to the prayer of Adolf Adam as he prepares his heart for Jesus, reminding himself of that holy night. Yeah. 
one holy night in an insignificant town overwhelmed by an inconvenient census. It hardly seems the place for the birth of a king. The Magi certainly thought so as they traveled all the way to Jerusalem thinking he would be there. And yet, surprising enough, that was where he was born, in the little town of Bethlehem. Just outside of Bethlehem, shepherds minding their own business, scared out of their skin as angels erupt in the sky, proclaiming the great news, angels from the realms of glory, the messengers that a child has come, the Savior of the nation. Oh 
come and worship the newborn king. The message that everyone took to heart that holy night. The message that we take to heart tonight as we proclaim the glories of God. We proclaim what happened on that night. There's nothing insignificant about Jesus' birth, nor heralding the coming of the newborn king. For he shall bring peace and goodwill to all, the Prince of Peace, the King of Kings. Speak. 
Welcome in our Savior's name. Thank you, thank you for joining us once again. Tonight we talk about praise. As we talk about the disciplines that it takes to, or, or as we prepare our hearts for Jesus, the disciplines of a Christian, praise is so prominent in our lives. And tonight, tonight we get the opportunity to praise God. Praise Him with our favorite Christmas hymns, our favorite Christmas songs. And it's funny that I mention that because two of my favorite songs are being sung tonight. This first one actually has one of my favorite contemporary songs ever. Open the Eyes of My Heart has always been one of my favorite songs. Growing up, I saw that prayer, the prayer that was written down. Open the eyes of my heart, God. I want to see you. It's so fitting that we sing those words tonight because this is the moment when Jesus came into the world, when he was seen and revealed to us for the first time. And it's in this moment, this moment when we join the people at the first birth in their amazement at this moment. For unto us a child is born. Open the eyes of my heart. Often the focus of Christmas falls upon the child, Jesus, being welcomed into the world. And why shouldn't it? After all, Jesus is the reason for Christmas. But this is one of my favorite Christmas hymns. And it draws upon the whole narrative. 
See, Jesus, Jesus isn't just some random event, but he's the fulfillment of all of God's promises. The fulfillment of God's love. As the Father looked down on his broken creation, he wanted to breathe into it new life. And this, this is the way that he does it. From beginning of time, this was his plan. Of the Father's love begotten, Jesus came. As we look at the nativity scene, it's just wrong not to have an angel. Not to have the angels host in the sky proclaiming the birth of the king. Hark the herald, angels sing. childhood, right? Away in a manger. You sing it for your preschool program, imagining the little child in the manger, Jesus. There, born in humble, lowly estate, away in a manger. <laughs> Yeah. 
generations, the church has asked the question, Mary, did you know? The simple answer is, of course not. But it's an important question for us to ask because in that asking, we join Mary in her pondering. We join Mary there at the scene, imagining this little child and seeing what that child would grow up to do. That's why this song holds a special place in our heart because not only does it tell the story, but it draws us into the story. It's our conversation with Mary. It's our experience now as we look at the child and see our Savior, everything that he would do for our sake, his tremendous love. Mary, did you know? This evening really is filled with great music. Now we move to my favorite Advent hymn, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. It's fitting. This is probably one of the most loved Advent hymns in the history of the church at large. In fact, the Catholic Church developed a Latin Mass strictly around this. They called it the Antiphon Service, a service that remembered the seven names of Jesus most of them written in Isaiah. And as we look at Jesus coming and we say this prayer, O come, O come, Emmanuel, we look at the names of Jesus as well. Different, 
facets of his identity and we begin to wrestle with who is this Jesus? He's God with us. The Lord of might who is there on Mount Sinai leading his people out of Egypt and the key of David. The promised Messiah who would open the treasure trove promised to David and locking away sin, death forever. O come, O come, Emmanuel.
Good evening and welcome in our Savior's name. A special welcome to any guests and visitors we have joining us tonight. I'm so glad that you decided to join us. 
Uh, my name is Pastor Joshua Parrish, and I'm here with, uh, w- with some wonderful musicians as we praise God together. Our first song is God Rest Ye Merry Gentlemen. It's not a song that's in our hymnal, but it's a well-known song in, in our culture today. A beautiful, beautiful song that really dives into what Christmas is all about. It's not just that Jesus came, but Jesus came with purpose to conquer Satan, to conquer your fears, your worries forever, to give you peace. Let nothing dismay. Remember, Christ our Savior was born this Christmas day. God rest you, merry gentlemen. we talk about praise, whenever we talk about those tidings of comfort and joy, that first Christmas night, you can't not talk about the angels. Angels we have heard on high, the first proclaimers of that amazing message. Jesus has come. Jesus will save angels we have heard on high.
All right, this is an epiphany song. But it, it's <laughs> beautiful. It's beautiful. And this time at Christmas when we talk, it's when the star appeared. Following that star. This song joins the wise men on their journey. As they journey to see the Christ child. And we wonder with them, what kind of God is this? Who would give up so much? Who would love us so deeply so as to give his own son? How many kings? It's Christmas. Chris Tomlin created a beautiful arrangement, taking away in a manger and go tell it on the mountain. Created this beautiful song, refocusing us on the true meaning of Christmas, that Christ child, but then sending us out, sending us out to go tell it on the mountain. Proclaim what the Christ child has come to do. Proclaim that he has come. It's Christmas. Thank you. 
all the proclamations, they lead somewhere, right? Jesus came. But does it matter if we don't respond? He came into our depravity. He lifted us up. He gave us his grace. But what does it mean if we don't respond? Hear the invitation. Oh, come, all ye faithful. time I see sing that song I imagine myself with the shepherds as they sit in their fields quietly watching their sheep all of a sudden the angel hosts give them a call a call to go and worship the baby the king of kings born in a manger and they heed that call they run and they praise the newborn king how sad would it be if that's where the story ended? If all it was was a baby in a shack meant to be the king of kings? Sure. What good is it if nobody knows? No. The shepherds, they praise the newborn king, but they want everyone to hear. They go through the streets proclaiming this Jesus is born. The king of kings. The one who would bring peace. The Messiah. On Christmas night, all Christians sing. It's our call, too. As we stand before the manger, as we worship that newborn king, 
He was born not just for us, but for everyone else in the world. Let's proclaim that word to everyone we meet. On Christmas night, all Christians sing.
We have heard on high, sweetly singing o'er the plains and the mountains in reply, echoing the joyous strains. Gloria, in excelsis Oh, my. 
projected Would you believe after all we projected A child in a manger Lowly and small, the weakest of all Unlikeliest hero Wrapped in his mother's shawl Just a child, is this who we've waited for? To romance a world that has torn all apart How many fathers gave up their sons for me? Bringing our gifts for the newborn Savior All that we have, whether costly or meek Because we believe Gold for his honor and frankincense for Their thrones, how many lords have abandoned their 